All right. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Monica McCoubrey and I am the Wildlife Education Specialist with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission um, located in the Lincoln office. And I'm going to go ahead and let my uh, moderator introduce herself as well. Hi, my name is Allie Mays and I'm also um, with Game and Parks from the Lincoln office. So if you have any questions during today's program, if you just want to put them in the chat, um, you can chat me directly or use the open chat. And then as Monica has breaks or at the end, we'll try to get to all the questions. And one thing I do wanna point out for everybody too, is that if you would like to, we have a new option. If you go to the very bottom of your Zoom, there's that little CC closed captioning logo down there. Um, and you can click on that and request a live transcript and all of the subtitles should be popping up on your um, bottom of your screen. You may already be seeing this. This is kind of new for us and we just wanna make sure we're doing it right. So you can request that if you would like. If you do not want that, that's totally fine, but it is there if you would like that option. All right, um, so welcome everyone today. We're going to be talking about geology and fossils um, of the Nebraska area. So we live in Nebraska. We're gonna talk about Nebraska today and we have a lot to cover. We have about 500 million years of um, history to do in about 50 minutes. So we're gonna go really um, into it today. We're gonna go in depth, but we're also going to um, talk a little bit about not only the fossils and the prehistoric animals that were around in Nebraska during that time, but we're also going to talk about what our landscape looked like at different times in our history. So we will go ahead and I'll share my screen. any boxes. I'm going to click out of these. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and talk, like you said, about geology and fossils today. So um, just letting you everybody know that if you have questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat, like Allie mentioned. Just make sure that they stay on topic and that um, we're nice to everybody. Otherwise, we do have that right to remove you if there is an issue. Um, also want to point out to everyone, I do a lot of research for these programs, but I am by no means considered an expert in any of the subjects that I talk about um, on my science of. So if you have questions, I'm so glad you're asking them. If I cannot answer them, I will personally find someone that can answer those questions and then get back to you. So um, I love science and I'm, I'm so excited that you're asking questions, but um, have a little grace. Um, if I don't know them, I will definitely find someone that can answer them for you. All right. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about kind of some technical stuff just so that we can understand the rest of our um, program and what we're actually talking about. So what do we mean when we talk about our geologic time scale? Um, so like I mentioned, we have about 500 million years of history to talk about. Um, and so we better get started. So when we talk a lot about our geologic time, we're talking about different periods and eras and eons and all of these different um, times and geologic gaps in time. So um, this is kind of like the main areas that we're going to focus on today. Um, so we have everything from 2,500 million years ago, uh, even until the present. So even in the present, we are considered in an era. Um, it's still going, time is still happening, things are changing in our landscape. And in 25 million years, they might look back and be like, what were they doing on Zoom? So we have a lot of different things that we're talking about today. Um, and I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, you can certainly read them, um, but this is what we're talking about as far as our geologic time scale. We're really gonna focus on the Paleozoic all the way to the Cenozoic. Um, there's just not a lot of information about that Proterozoic time, um, at least not for Nebraska history that we can find. Um, so we're really gonna focus on a little more newer um, and earlier times. All right, so what is an eon? What's an era? Um, what do we actually mean? Oh my gosh, sorry. What do we mean when we're talking about this? So an eon is gonna be your largest division of geologic time. It basically takes two or more eras to form an eon. So we are currently in the Phanerozoic eon, which went from about 540 million years ago to where we are now. And then when we talk about an era, it's a unit of time that's shorter than an eon, but longer than a period. And it takes two or more periods to form that eon or that era. Um, so we are currently what we call the Cenozoic era. It began about 66 million years ago to the present. And anytime that you see MYA, that means million years ago, it's a very long thing to type out. So MYA is kind of just a nice abbreviation. 
A period is a basic unit of time um, where a single type of rock is formed. So if you can imagine, there's probably going to be quite a few periods when we talk about that. Um, so we are currently in the quaternary period, which means that it started about 1.8 million years ago to where we are now. And this, there's a lot happening in this time because we can find a lot and we know a lot of information about this. We can date things. So we know that here, um, the first humans came about, the first mammoths, the mastodons, saber-toothed cats appeared. Um, and then as far as our epochs, this is just a subdivision of a period. So um, we kind of are going from the biggest to the smallest here. Um, and there's lots of different um, epochs sometimes in a single period, it just depends. And there will not be a quiz on this, I promise. This is a lot of information, but just so that you know what we're talking about. And we're also gonna talk about fossils today. So what in the world is a fossil? We think about shark teeth and finding trabolites and um, crinoids and that kind of stuff, but what is it? So a fossil in the bare bones is a record of an organism that can show things like the shape, the size, the texture, sometimes the behavior of an animal um, we can look at. And when we talk a little bit about places that you can go see these fossils in Nebraska, we'll talk a little bit more about the different types. Um, but basically we're gonna worry about four of them today. There's something called a mold fossil, which is basically a negative image um, in the substrate. So the impression is gonna be backwards. Uh, this could be anything from skin, leaves, teeth, claws, and even um, embryos can be found in this as well. And then you also have something called a cast. So if you've ever broken an arm or a leg, you know that you have to wear a cast. Um, so basically it is an imprint in that rock or sediment um, that was hollow at one point, but has been filled in with minerals from that substrate or soil, and it's hardened to form a solid rock. So again, this could be things like skin, leaves, teeth, claws, and even embryos as well. All right, so what are we talking about when we talk about trace fossils? You might've heard that before. Um, so these don't necessarily contain information about the organism itself, but um, information on traces left by the organism. So this is something like a burrow or a nest or a footprint. Um, the photo on the left over here, if anyone wants to guess what that might be in the chat, go ahead and um, put that your guess in there. Um, it is Trace fossils are also the most uh, common kind of fossil that you're gonna find. It offers more information on how the animal lived rather than what the animal looked like. And then we have our true form fossils. So these are large, body parts of animals that have been replaced by minerals. So limbs, torsos, fingers, heads. Um, it's not formed using an impression, uh, but the organism is basically displaced by those minerals and then hardens to become that rock. And for anyone that did try and guess what this thing was, um, this is called a coprolite. So coprolite is just fossilized poop or dung. So, and it, it kind of even looks like that. So if you got it right, good for you. All right, so Nebraska's geologic history. So we kind of looked at a little bit about the overall, what is this time period and these scales? So what are we looking at when we talk about specifically Nebraska? So we're gonna start with the Paleozoic era, which is the oldest of the eras that we're gonna worry about today. All right, so globally, what was happen happening? So Nebraska wasn't a state at this time. It was just not even called Nebraska. It was just a piece of land um, mixed into this thing called Pangaea. So what are we looking at? So 500 million years ago, the place that would have been now Nebraska was a shallow sea um, about the time of the late Cambrian period. Um, and then over time, it has been left thin beach sand deposit. So we have very, very thin sand at this time. And then I'm not going to read through every single one of these. You can read through them yourself. Um, but basically, over time, um, different types of um, substrates came into play in Nebraska. So there are things like in southeast Nebraska, there was a thing called um, an erosional gap. So basically, what we're talking about is two rock units in which the upper unit is way younger than the lower unit. And we call that a break in our geologic record. So every time you see something, another erosional gap. So it's a break in our units where the upper is younger than the lower. Um, so over time, we had sandstone deposited. The seas will come and go. They will rise and fall. Um, there's a lot of erosion happening in Nebraska. 
the seas will transgress. Uh, carbonate rock actually forms and is deposited in Nebraska. And then over time, there were major plates colliding with each other. Um, and over time in Nebraska, we were still towards the center that caused a lot of stresses on the interior part of that continent. And again, we had another erosional gap. So a lot of erosional gaps happening from 500 million years to about 325 million years ago. All right, so in the Paleozoic era, as far as Nebraska goes, this was between 251 and 542 million years ago. This time is referred to as the ancient life time. It's divided into about six periods, and you're going to hear a lot of talk about this stuff called Pennsylvanian rock. It is the oldest rock that is exposed to the Earth's surface in Nebraska. So over on the side here on the right, you can see the photo. This is mostly in the southeastern, eastern part of Nebraska is where you're going to find this. Um, so the seas have advanced over a highly big space in Nebraska. Um, and over time, it formed, it went up, it went down, the deposits were occurring, we had things like black shale was being deposited, um, places that also have limestone in that area. So if you're, place, if you're from um, like Plattsmouth or Louisville, you are known for your limestone and your quarries down there. Um, this is because there was um, an ancient climate, it was arid at the time, and the seas were drying. Um, so when the seas were really low, uh, coal was also being deposited. And if you've ever visited uh, Indian Cave State Park, there is actually a coal seam in one of the cave. All right, so this is what it looks like as far as, okay, so Pennsylvanian rock, what are you talking about? Um, so if you look at the very, very top layer of the soil that you stand on and go down, this is what you would see in those areas. So um, way, way, way over on the left side on that column, um, this is what um, period that you were in. And um, it talks about things like the Dakota formation. This is the type of rock that was there. Um, so you might hear me mention things like the Dakota formation, um, you might hear um, the different types of soil and the less. So this is what I mean when I'm talking about that, just kind of as a visual um, idea of what I'm mentioning. All right, so in those Paleozoic times, what kind of fossils would you have found? Um, there was a number of different creatures, but they looked way different than what our present day organisms looked like. Um, so very end of the Paleozoic, there was a huge extinction. It was known as the end Permian mass extinction. And about 95% of our shallow marine creatures were affected. And remember at this time, Nebraska is covered in sea. So this is a big deal. Um, so there are these little tiny one celled organisms that resembled a grain of rice. And I have a photo of them here. They're very, very small, um, but over time, these little tiny things, they were benthic creatures. So they were at the very bottom of the ocean. Um, they moved around the sea and they ate other smaller tiny organisms. Um, these again became extinct at the end of the Permian um, because of that mass extinction. All right, so what other types of things would you have found? You would have found a lot of coral actually. Um, and if you've ever rock hunted and fossil hunted in Nebraska, you might've found some of these. Um, so two major groups of corals that you could have found during this time were called the rugos corals. Um, so these were colonial and very solitary, sometimes known as horn corals. Um, the photo here that makes them look like little claws or horns, those are the ones that I'm referring to. Uh, so these guys sat on the ocean floor and they're extremely well preserved in our fossil record. So we found a lot of them. And because of that, they are actually Nebraska's state invertebrate fossil, um, which I didn't even know that we had until we found this. I knew we had a fossil, but I didn't know we had a state invertebrate fossil as well. And then we also have these things called tabulate corals. Um, these are ones actually formed colonies, huge big structures that were very twisty. And then if you look on this photo, this brown image, that's um, one of the fossils that we, um, that we have found. That's what they would have looked like. All right, there are also brachiopods. So these were marine shelled creatures that were very similar to our present day things like clams or mollusks. Um, the only thing that was different is that um, they resembled the clams, but they were symmetrical. Mollusks are not symmetrical. Um, the photo here, this gray one, that's what they would have looked like. Um, and then we also have crinoids, which sometimes people call them sea lilies. These are extremely abundant. You can still find these uh, pretty much a lot of places in that Southeast area. 
uh, SRAM Education Center is one of them. Um, so they were attached to the bottom. They were kind of these cool feathery looking plants. They had these arms to capture food. Um, but again, they went extinct at the end of the Permian. Some other things that you could find from this time that were not as common, um, shark teeth. They're found in limestone rocks or shales. There was a lot of fish at the time. Coprolites, again, we talked about those that are just fossilized feces. And then lots of plants, things like ferns and tree ferns as well. All right, we also at this time had marine predators. So there were nautiloids and ammonoids. So these guys were like jet propelled um, animals and they looked very similar kind of to our present day nautilus. Um, so these guys had really big eyes. Um, the ones that they talked about during this time that were not in Nebraska were giant, but the ones we have in Nebraska were very small. Uh, sharks were also on top of the food chain. Um, they could get up to 15 feet long. They could be found um, pretty regularly in uh, sediments that are younger than 400 million years old. Um, and if you think about it, sharks, if you were on last week, they have teeth that are continuously um, restructured and regrowed, um, regrew. So these guys, they could produce in their lifetime sometimes up to several thousand fossils. And there were a lot of sharks. So there could be a lot of fossils out there that we're still looking to find. Um, places like I mentioned, Plattsmouth, um, Louisville, you guys have a lot of different types of um, quarries and a lot of different types of limestone. Um, this is a great place to find things like compressed bodies of sharks and jellyfish, and even some shrimp-like crustaceans that we had as well. All right, so where to find these? SRAM is a great place. Lots of um, crinoid fossils. You can find those rugose corals. Uh, Nebraska City is a good place to look as well. You can find some in the limestone, like I mentioned, brachiopods here. Um, Auburn is another good area. And then Indian Cave State Park is a fantastic place to really look and see the different types of um, substrates. So there are things like large channel of sandstone. Um, this is because we had really lots of fluctuating sea levels. So we know at one time, Indian Cave was a very swampy area. Um, definitely not like that now. It has a lot of trees and it's dry, um, but there was a coal seam like I mentioned, it's about 18 to 30 inches thick in some places. And during the late 1800s, there was also a mining industry down there, not really for profit, very small. Um, there's nothing now to worry about. Um, but at one time, they thought that they could make it rich up there because of that coal seam, but it's just not quite big enough. All right, are there lots of information being thrown at you so far? Um, but let's check the chat. Are there any good questions or any questions at all, Allie? Um, Mary had a question about how um, the name Pennsylvania came about. I entered a little information, but if you have anything else to add to that. that uh, nope, good. that looks like you answered it. Yeah, it's just the different types of the layers of the strata. And I saw the Mississippian in there too. Yeah, that's what I would have probably said as well. Good question. Okay, we'll keep moving. But again, if you guys have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Like I mentioned, there's kind of a lot of technical terms in here, um, but you guys want a geology. And again, this is the science of, so we're gonna really go in depth on that. Um, so this is not a eon, but we're gonna talk about the Cretaceous period because things started to explode in this era or this part of time. All right, so what did Nebraska look like and where can you find these Cretaceous rocks? Well, here's a photo. Um, so we're moving a little bit more to the west in Nebraska now. Um, and then if you look way out in the panhandle, in the northwest corner, you get a little bit of those um, types of rocks as well. So this time was about 145 to 66 million years ago. Um, the climate changed drastically many times in Nebraska during this, um, these millions of years. So Pierre Shale was gonna be around. Um, it was about 2,000 feet down. Um, so this is very dark shale rock that had occasional ash layers in it. Um, so we know from looking at that, that there was a very deep water environment. So the sea at this time was very, very um, thick and very deep. We also get something called the Niobrara Formation, which is in the Niobrara area. If you've ever been down there um, or up there, I guess, there's a lot of chalk. There's tons of fossils up there. And we know that this was a marine environment. Um, at this time though, it looks like that the, um, it went from about 2000 feet of water to about 560 feet. So um, it's changing. 
Um, 888 million years ago, we had this stuff called Greenhorn Limestone. This was a little bit more of a shallow marine area. Um, and then the Dakota Formation that I mentioned too, um, you get this mudstone and this carbonaceous shale, and it's about 600, and, and 600 feet deep. All right, so some global events that were happening during the Cretaceous. Um, I have a photo of Iowa on here. I know we're not Nebraska, but it is very important. Um, so the Rocky Mountains were being formed or the, the beginnings of the Rocky Mountains. So um, there was this, um, basically this um, build of the marine, um, of the Rocky Mountains and this marine water basically flooded the continent, um, including Nebraska. And this helped shape the Rocky Mountains. Um, there was also a lot of anoxic events, just basically meaning that there was very, a lot of stagnation in the water, the stuff wasn't being circulated. So overall, that led to a large amount of organic matter to be just kind of put at the bottom of the ocean. Um, and what happens is today, that's our petroleum that we have. Um, you can find a lot of this evidence right around the Nebraska-Kansas border. Um, if you find stuff called greenhorn limestone, you can find evidence of those anoxic events. And then something else that major happened was this thing called the Manson impact. So it was an asteroid that came um, right where that um, red spot is on the Iowa um, picture there. And basically what happened is this asteroid hit in that area. It was about a mile wide and it caused a tsunami because remember the water is covering this area right now. Um, so we know that because of not only that impact, but also we can see evidence of it um, within a rock as well. All right, so what are you gonna find during this time? Um, there were things like ammonites, um, which is, I have a photo right here, this um, artist rendering of one, it kind of looks like a nautilus a little bit. Um, so very, very evolutionary, good for um, specimen for study because it was very, very rapid in its development. It's mostly found in Pierre Shale um, in the Niobrara area and that greenhorn limestone that we mentioned. Um, and then we have this extinct group of bivalves um, which is a, the photo that I have right here that looks like a little bitty clam. These guys were super well adapted to a lot of environments, so they thrived, um, but they're very common again in that greenhorn limestone and the Niobrara formation. And then we also finally, our big kind of animal that we kind of maybe think is super cool is our plesiosaur. Um, so these were very large marine reptiles. Don't confuse them with dinosaurs. They were large marine reptiles. Um, several almost complete skeletons have been found in Northeast Nebraska. And one of those places has been Niobrara State Park. Something else, people always ask us about dinosaurs. Where were the dinosaurs? Well, unfortunately, we have really acidic soils during this time, um, and that has caused a lot of the bones to disintegrate. We also just can't find any, and we just don't think we have a lot. Um, but there have been fragments of only two dinosaur um, fossils that have ever been found in Nebraska. One was in 1928. Um, some guy found this huge rock and hauled this 65-pound um, piece of stone into the university and they were really excited about it. And then in 1981, an eight-year-old boy was playing and found um, a tooth. Uh, so it's been a while since we found a dinosaur. Um, there's only known dinosaurs lived about a hundred million years ago in our coastal forest is what Nebraska was at that time. But we have also found um, these ornithopod footprints um, in the sandstone units in Nebraska. So those are again, those trace fossils. Doesn't give a lot about what the organism looked like, but we know it was here and it gives us a little bit more into the behavior um, and their, um, so their social behavior and maybe what they were doing. We also have these calcareous uh, nano fossils, very, very tiny little things. They were plankton. Um, they're found um, a lot in the Niobrara formation. And something that I thought was really neat is that Niobrara formation, the chalk up in the Niobrara area, it is the same type of chalk that is found in the cliffs of Dover. So um, that kind of gives us a little bit of insight to as how the world looked um, that long ago. And then also pollen grains have been found. This really helps us with dating, um, figuring out what time those were found and what else was also there. Um, ferns would have been pretty much the main dominant plants of the Nebraska landscape at that time. So those have also been found and those gray and black and white photos here, those are little tiny microscopic plant um, pollen. And then up here, you can see the footprints, um, this guy sitting on this. This is what those um, ornithopod footprints would have looked like. 
All right, for any of you guys that have watched uh, Jurassic Park, um, you might've heard of the Mosasaur. Um, this is pretty cool because uh, they've been found in Nebraska. So in 1987, we had two horticulturists um, from Game and Parks actually. They were in Niobrara State Park, they were planting some trees and all of a sudden they noticed this fossil that was sticking out. So they looked at it and one of the guys was like, wow, this, this lower jaw is super cool. So he brought it into the university and was like, what is this? Can you help me figure this out? And they determined it to be a Mosasaur. And this was the very first one ever to be found in Nebraska. Uh, so they went and excavated it and they found um, basically the complete skull, the jaws, and even a partial skeleton and a well-preserved paddle. So this is a lot of information that we found about that Mosasaur. Um, the skull they said was quote, an amazing state of preservation. Um, the eye rings, which were extremely fragile, they're about the size of grapefruits, they were still intact. So even something as fragile as the eye rings um, were preserved, they could tell a lot about this animal. Uh, something else is when they brought it back to the university and they were kind of um, examining it, um, a lady just said, wow, there's like this row of teeth marks on this. What in the world could this have been? So they determined that it was another Mosasaur bit this mosasaur and they believe that it died in a fight. Um, so this was the first record of mosasaurs um, attacking each other and um, ever have been found on another mosasaur. So pretty cool that it was in Nebraska at Niobrara State Park. If you ever visit Niobrara State Park, um, there is a little sign that says mosasaur um, excavation site. So if you ever visit it, you can visit where they found that fossil. All right, so where are you gonna find these types of things. Um, here's our area at Niobrara State Park, Ponca State Park, Rock Creek Station is another good spot. Um, if you go to Niobrara State Park, there's excellent exposures of that Niobrara formation, that um, type of rock. And then you can also see that um, Mosasaur as well. Uh, in some areas, you can see this thing called the Crow Creek member of the Pierre Shale. Um, this is how we know that that tsunami happened when it hit Iowa, that asteroid. Um, this occurred after a very large asteroid struck um, Iowa about 74 million years ago. Ponca State Park, you can find this stuff called Granera Shale, the Dakota Formation. You can find Greenhorn Limestone up there. And even places like Rock Creek Station, you're going to find that sandstone. Um, and again, different types of shale as well. All right, that was a lot of information I know again, um, but we're gonna move on to the Cenozoic area, era, which is actually where we are um, in our history now. Um, do we have anything in the chat? Okay, cool. I'm either not doing a good job or I'm just giving you so much information. So I'm gonna say I'm doing a good job. You got a lot of information, so. All right, so moving on to the Cenozoic era, um, again, this is where we are now. So this is going to get a little bit more into the stuff that you might have heard of more um, or seen at the University State Museum, kind of the larger mammals um, and larger animals out there. So this is fairly recent compared to the things like the Paleozoic. Um, so right now at this time, about 55.8 to about 65.5 million years ago, our Earth's climate was pretty warm. There were very, very small um, polar ice sheets. The sea level was very high. Nebraska was very warm and very humid, very similar to what it is now. Um, but then again, it starts to cool. We start to get a little bit more arid. Um, the sediments from the Rocky Mountains are being deposited in Nebraska. This happens for a very, very long time. Uh, over time, Nebraska kind of dries a little bit and becomes a savanna kind of like environment. Um, the climate was cooler. Um, still, that sediment is being dropped from the Rockies. And then also it continues to cool and dry, um, but the ice sheets are expanding. Um, so the global sea level at about 1.8, about 5.3 million years ago, um, drops about 50 meters. It's a huge drop. Um, there's an increase in the ice sheets, which leads to a decrease in the temperatures and the sea level. And then at about, I can't see, 0 0.01 to 1.8 million years ago. Um, this is pretty much the term that everyone describes as the ice age. Um, the glaciers have covered large parts um, and even parts of Nebraska. And then over time, this created things like the Great Lakes. So um, we wouldn't have what we have now without those ice sheets and those glaciers. 
Uh, some places in Nebraska, you can still go and see places where glaciers have moved over time um, and kind of shifted. Um, I know when we've done some workshops before, people have kind of pointed that out. So it's kind of neat. All right, so our Cenozoic fossils of Nebraska. So at the end of the Cretaceous, another asteroid impact led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Everyone usually knows this one. Um, a lot of those ammonites and a lot of other faunas just were gone. Um, so after those extinction, basically what happened was the age of mammals. So mammals started to come about. Um, marine reptiles were replaced by sharks as the top carnivore. And even in places like Nebraska, we're finding elephants, rhinoceroses, horses, large bison, camels. Um, this is a very grassland dominated area. So we're finding a lot of those big, large herbivores. So some common things that you're going to find. Um, so we have this Eocene epoch that we talk about. So mammal diversity basically explodes. The ancestors of the elephants come about, um, the earliest bats, our large whales. Um, they had these scary six foot tall birds, these diametras. Um, they fed on smaller mammals. Um, this Oligocene epoch that came about, um, mammal diversity kind of reaches its peak. So there's large terrestrial herbivores. Um, there's this um, primate, including the monkeys, kind of began to diversify. So we're getting a lot of more um, uh, recent um, ancestors of the things that we have now. All right, and then the Miocene. We, again, you can see this artist rendition here, um, but grasslands, again, were dominant. So very large grass-eating herbivores were around, those horses, deer, camels, um, and even things like frogs and mice and snakes and birds started to come about. Um, but there were also carnivores. We'll talk about one um, that's pretty fascinating to me. Um, it's a wolf dog-like mammal that we'll talk about here in a little bit. And then the Pleistocene, you're finding things like mammoths and mastodons. Humans also arrived from Asia at about 10,000 years ago. Um, this also then coincides with extinction of our megafauna, like our elephants and our giant sloths and saber-toothed cats. All right. Um, so Nebraska is known for our elephants, which is kind of weird to say, but if you've ever been to the University State Museum, you know that there's a lot of information about um, our elephants like stegomastodons and mammoths and things like that. That's because we have a lot of information, a lot of fossils that have been found. Um, there were many types of elephants that came about on the Nebraska landscape. Um, four of them that we're going to really kind of briefly cover um, are four tuskers, stegomastodons, mastodons, and mammoths. These were the most common ones that you would find at that time. So these things called four tuskers, which is this um, photo here, the animal that looks like it actually has skin on it. Um, so they did have four tusks. Um, they migrated from Asia during the middle and late Miocene. And they can still be found, maybe if you're lucky, um, in the Ogallala area, um, in the Ogallala group, kind of near Valentine. So these are the oldest known elephants to have existed in Nebraska. Um, the other photo that we have here, just the looking skeleton picture, is called the Stegomastodon. So these existed during the Pliocene, which is about 4 million years ago. And they have been found pretty much everywhere in Nebraska. A lot of different places throughout the state. Um, and again, a little bit more well-known than the four Tuskers. All right, and then our mastodons and our mammoths. So in Nebraska, about 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago, our climate was cool and dry. So these mastodons ate things like shrubs and pine trees, um, again, in that grassland dominated ecosystem. Um, the remains are also found in glacial deposits that are in the eastern part of the state, so kind of um, where the state museum is. And then we also have our mammoths, so most common type of elephant fossil that can be found in Nebraska. Again, about 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago, um, there was a lot of different species that crossed that Bering Strait, and they originally then made it to that Nebraska area. But something that's kind of neat is the world's largest mammoth skeleton was found in Lincoln County. Um, they named it Archie. If you've ever been to the State Museum in probably, what, past 10, 15 years, you've noticed that huge mammoth um, at the beginning, that statue, that's Archie's size. So that would have been a um, replica, a statue replica of how large that animal was. So it was huge. So go visit Archie. 
All right, um, what are some places to visit that you could possibly find those things? Um, Totsul Geologic Park and Hudson Ming Bone Bed. These are really cool areas. Um, Toadstool has some of the same rock formations that have, can be found in the Badlands in South Dakota. Um, some of the stuff can be viewed straight from the hiking trail. Um, the Hudson Mang area is kind of attached a little bit to Toadstool and it's the largest bone bed in North America. Um, for some reason, all these bison right there were just all killed in a single unknown event. So again, largest area in Nebraska to view those bone beds. And then places like agate fossil beds, um, they have a lot of rock that's exposed. Um, they found two horned rhinoceroses, horses, camels, um, these things called oreodonts, um, so which are related to camels, um, but very, very cool things. Um, something else I also wanna point out if you're in from that central Nebraska area, the Scotia chalk mine, if you've ever been found in that area or you ever get a chance to visit that area, um, it's very, very cool. You see a lot of different types of rock formations. You find a lot of different types of chalks. Um, and it was at one time a commercial chalk mine. Um, not anymore. It's a historical site now, um, but it's a very cool place to visit. All right, so that was a little bit about our geologic time, some of the fossils that you can find. Um, I was, I just have a little bit here at the end. I want to talk about some of those really specialized fossil areas in Nebraska. Um, I don't see anything in the chat, so we will just go ahead and keep going. All right, so I mentioned agate a little bit earlier. This is out in Western Nebraska. Um, so this group of people bought this land and they found this weird thing on their property. They called it the devil corkscrews. They have no idea what it was. So they called in some people to come excavate um, from the university and figure out what it was. It was originally called the Agate Springs Ranch. Um, but what they found again were these things called the devil's corkscrews. They have no idea what they were, but they were later recognized as a burrow from an ancient kind of beaver like animal called the paleocaster. Um, if you remember me talking about the carnivores earlier, something that could have been found in that area is a bear dog, a bear dog. Um, here's an artist rendition of it, kind of terrifying, but like super cool at the same time. Um, number of carnivore fossils have been found in agate, um, not till about 1905 though. Um, so these things were very large. They were wolf, hyena-like bear dogs. They were top carnivores in that area. Uh, about 22 to 23 million years ago, they could have been found roaming around eating camels, rhinos, small, um, those oreodonts that we talked about as well. And then something else that's really neat in Nebraska, they found these underground dens um, containing fossils of these bear dogs. And this was the first record um, of a denning behavior in a large mammal carnivore. So again, found here in Nebraska. Sorry. Sorry, never had that happen before. All right. So something else that you can find at Agate um, are these things. At one time they were called Dionysus, but now they are called Deodons is the correct name um, is what I was told. Um, these are rarest of all mammals that were found at Agate, um, but they were, think of a bison size, six to eight feet tall at the shoulder. They were like these pigs. Um, the teeth that they had, think about if you hold up your wrist, they're about as thick as your wrist was around. Um, they were a scavenger, but they also ate, um, they were an omnivore. So they eat leaves, fruit, other dead animals like carry on. Um, they also had these things called the menoceras, these three foot tall rhinos. Um, instead of having a horn, like a normal rhino that we see now, that is one in front of the other, they had two horns at the very end of the nose that were side by side and females did not have them at all. Um, but all of these um, specimens that they found at agate have been scattered and jumbled. And they believe that those deodons, the scavengers have kind of picked them off over time. So um, most of the other animals they found were intact. These for some reason were all scattered and jumbled. 
And then if you look, um, the spiral burrow, this is that doubles corkscrew, that paleo caster. Um, they're just spiral burrows that were made by these um, rodents. They originally thought that they were tap roots from ancient trees, but later discovered that they were rodent burrows. So if you ever see those, they have a really cool rendition of one, um, an actual fossil, I guess, um, at the university, at the State Museum at Morrow Hall. So I would suggest going um, and seeing that. All right, another one is Ashfall Fossil Bed. So this one is super interesting to me. I feel like it was originally called the Poison Ivy Quarry. Um, it wasn't discovered until 1971, so fairly recent. Um, so a guy said, hey, I think we should check this out. And so 1977 to 1979, they went and excavated it. They found about 100 complete rhinos um, complete skeletons of rhinos, but they also found horses, camels, turtles, cranes, and other animals. Um, they believe it's about 10 million years old. And the really truly unique thing about this is that they are all preserved in 3D. So everything from population dynamics, they could tell the diet, they found disease processes, and even social behavior can be found by just looking at this site. Um, places like this are incredibly rare. There's not very many. And how lucky are we here in Nebraska to have one of those? Um, so they know that all the skeletons were buried in a bed of volcanic ash. So over time, they believe that they inhaled all the ash and they eventually died. Um, but in some of the animals, they found unborn embryos and they also found the stomach content. So there's a lot of information that they can fix and figure out just by looking at this site. So of the 18 vertebrates, they found 12 mammals, the mostly those barrel bodied rhinos, and then five species of other different types of mammals were found as well. All right, here's another photo. Um, like I said, they found a very distinct pattern of the animals that died there. Um, they always found it was the rhinoceros first. They don't know why, they just, rhinoceros were always first. And then in the deeper layer, the smaller hooved animals, um, the horses and camels, and then the turtles and the birds. So they just found that the small creatures died first, then the middles, then the rhinos. So everything that you really see on top are those rhinos, and then everything else is below it. Um, but they know that the animals did not die all at once. They were a few days or even weeks later. Um, some of the animals showed bite marks, they believe from scavengers, um, and even things like bear dogs, um, they found that those carcasses were not completely buried before those carnivores had access to them. And then every fossil that they found here had these weird abnormal patches of ba basically highly porous superficial bone, which is very, very um, relevant and common in things that have inhaled a large amount of volcanic ash. So basically they believe that everything died because of lung failure. All right, another really cool place is Toadstool Geologic Park. So this is about uh, 20 miles or so from like Nebraska-Wyoming border. Um, it's in the Ogallala National Grasslands. So it's a federal site, um, not owned by Game and Parks. Um, the rock formations here, they believe are about 38 to 24 million years old. And like I mentioned earlier, they believe it is the same type of rock that is found in the Badlands of South Dakota. And they share many of the same fossils as well. Um, here is uh, something that's really unique to this area as far as a fossil is they found these really large giant pigs. Um, they think we're chasing two smaller species of rhinos down the stream channel and they found basically all of that. So they determined that these two pigs were chasing these rhinos um, down the stream channel just by looking at the fossils. They also could find things like miniature horses, um, giant tortoises were there, pigs, humpless camels, rhinos. Um, and then as you might have guessed, why is it called toadstool? Well, if you've ever been there, you know that the rocks look like little toadstools. So they believe that the first visitors there in the 1800s named it that, and the name just kind of stuck. Um, but it's created by the wind and the water. It slowly erodes the soft clay faster than the harder sandstone. So you get those toadstool shaped rocks. All right, Volcano, or volcanoes were super common in this area because they found a lot of ash. So over time that ash would settle, the water and snow would dissolve it and it would seep into the cracks and it would crystallize. Um, so there's also a major geologic fault zone um, in the horizontal band. So when you walk into the park, if you look straight ahead, um, there's a little 
pamphlet that you can grab that talks a little bit about the geology of the area and it will show you where that fault zone is. Um, so they believe that if people were there about two to eight million years ago, you could have felt that huge shift because there was a huge shift. Um, there's two different types of rocks that you can find here. There's light bluff colored sandstone and then a darker sandstone. Um, so we know that this was formed as a sandbar in the river um, about 30 million years ago. And if you ever have been there during a rainstorm, you know to be careful because it does flood. It's an ancient riverbed and it still can do that. Um, so they believe that the wildlife was all attracted to the water and you can find remnants of, tr of tracks and prints and even impressions of different types of plants. All right, so then I just have one more thing. Um, Shane Tucker is our highway paleontologist. He is amazing. If you ever need questions or ever have like a fossil that you found, um, he would be glad to answer that. However, we get a lot of people that ask, can I collect fossils or how do I do that? Um, so I just want to, he wanted me to really touch on this. Um, so can I just, if I find a fossil, can I take it? So if you're on federal lands, if you're in a state park or a wildlife management area, WMA, it is illegal to take in, collect or excavate without a permit. So you're like, well, can I get a permit? They are only issued to qualified paleontologists who curate those fossils and their duplicates into federally approved facilities. So like the University State Museum. So even Shane Tucker, who is our highway paleontologist has to apply for those federal permits to pick up things. Um, there are no permits though for the collection of like plants, invertebrates, um, fossils for commercial uses, um, except for petrified wood, which is then managed under the Minerals Materials Act. So you have to look at that if you're really interested in doing that. Um, but let's say you go find invertebrate and plant fossils. They can be collected at the surface without a permit and you, if you're not digging. Um, the permit though is required for research, but unfortunately they, they don't say to sell. So that is what our regs state. Um, so if you find one on the ground, you pick it up, that's fine. Um, we don't want to tell people, hey, go pick up all the fossils because then again, those resources are gone forever. Um, Shane always mentioned, if you find a fossil, you know, please turn it into the museum. It, they can tell you a little bit more about what it is, where it came from, how old it is. But then again, all of us can enjoy that resource for a long time um, instead of each individual person just enjoying it for themselves. So he really did want me to touch on that. A lot of people ask him, can I just pick up those fossils? So now you know. All right, so I know that was a ton of information. Um, clearly, Ali and I were talking about this. We had like 74 people on here. We had 139 people register. There's clearly a, people want geology and fossils. And so hopefully you found this interesting um, and you learned quite a bit about Nebraska's history and geologic time. So next week, we're gonna talk about mussel. So in Nebraska, we have freshwater mussels. We're doing some really cool research here at Nebraska Game of Parks, and I want to share that with you as well. Um, we're going to be talking about a malacologist. If you don't know what that is, it's a person that studies mussels. And um, so we're going to talk a lot about mussels next week. All right, so we only have four left. So we have mussels, we'll talk about rodents, earthworms, and then salamanders to end in March. And then if you really liked this and you want more, we have a ton of Science of um, episodes on our YouTube channel. Um, I know a lot of you guys that filled out that evaluation last week. Thank you if you did. Um, you mentioned things like, I would like this, 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 and this. Some of those are on our old playlist. So if you would like to go to our Nebraska Game and Parks uh, education YouTube channel and go under the science of playlist, you can view all of them. And some of those topics that you had put on there, we have already completed. So that's kind of nice. And then we also have our wildlife education Facebook page. So if you would like more information and more events that we do, or you just like to expand your knowledge, we also have an Instagram page. And then you can also find our Nebraska wildlife education website as well. So thank you everyone for uh, coming to this day. Hope you learned a lot. And then next week, we're gonna be talking about muscles. So we'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. Um, anything in the chat? Yeah, we had a few questions, Monica. So Anna asked, was there any explanation found for why the burrows were spiral? So those double yeah. corkscrews. Good question. Um, they believe that when they spiraled them, they just believe that it helped with the flooding. So at the time there was a lot of water um, and the sea levels were 
kind of um, larger than they are now, they think that it helped with the flooding. So the animal knew that if it made a certain type of furrow that it wouldn't flood as much. Um, I thought that was kind of cool too. Um, someone said they're still excavating every day at Ashfall. Yes, and you can go view them, which is kind of neat, though they did um, take a lot of fossils out and put them in the museum, but they also kept a lot because they wanted people to enjoy them and to see them. So you can literally go um, certain times within the year and go walk around this huge site and watch the paleontologists do their stuff. And so that's kind of neat as well. Someone asked, where was the volcano that caused ash falls? I believe. Yeah, a couple of people good... answered that, Monica. It oh, was, okay. I was um, going to say Yellowstone. Yellowstone. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. I should look, I guess. Um, yeah. And someone, then Raisha um, mentioned a couple cool apps. Yeah. Um, so Rocked is an app that allows you to see rock information for certain locations. Expedition Nebraska is one from UNL that showcases the Cenozoic period or the life that was alive at that time. Um, yeah. I see Do you someone know of said any other ones, Monica. Yeah. Um, I don't know of any apps. So thank you for putting that in there. But um, for everyone that registered today, I was going to send an evaluation and then some also um, resources as well. Um, that Shane has sent me that are free and you can and look at them, the digital commons. Um, you can view all the papers from UNL about these places as well. And you can view the um, National Park Service. They have a lot of information on here too. Um, one thing I did wanna share with the people that are left here, um, there is this thing called the Sellers of Time. It was a publication by the University and Nebraska Game of Parks in the 90s. It still has really good kind of that introduction um, about our history and the mammals and the fossils that are found here. Um, one thing that's really cool about this is that um, you still have to pay for it, but it I think it's like $2. So, um, and Shane swears that it's the best resource out there. They used to use it for their paleontology classes at UNL as their textbook. Um, so there's very, very good information in there too. Um, do you have any information on the rock and fossils in uh, Alexandria along roadsides? A little bit. So when I talked to Shane, our paleontologist at university, he was mentioning that he found um, his first fossil that he ever found was at Alexandria, um, was it the state record or WMA down there. Um, he mentioned that he found a lot of like green clams um, when he was little. And that's kind of the thing that got him into being a paleontologist. So that's really all the information I know of. I know there's more out there. Um, so I can certainly do some research on that and put that in my um my notes as well to figure out. So good question. Yes, thank you for putting those apps in there. I had no idea about those. So. All right. Well, um, I will be sending out an evaluation to everyone that registered, like I mentioned. Um, where you can find this, give us about 24 hours and it will be on um, YouTube as well. And then um, we'll put some resources in there. And if you have time, it would be great if you could fill out that evaluation. We will send you a thank you swag for filling it out. We also like that. Um, someone said, where can we purchase the book? Um, you can go to the Nebraska Game and Parks like shop. It is $2 if you would like the soft cover or if you wanna be a big spender, it's $3 for the hardcover. So um, it's a very, very good book. It doesn't just talk about our um, paleontology, but also the archeology span side as well. And the first kind of peoples that were in Nebraska too. So very, very good information in that. And I will put all that in the um, email that I will send out to you as well. So, all right. Thank you everyone. It was a lot of information, but I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned a lot about Nebraska and our geologic history and some of the animals that we had here. It was very cool. So. All right. Well, thank you, Allie, again, too. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone.